Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's March 15th order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Hubbardston Planning Board will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with the right and or requirement to attend the meeting can be found on our website. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means in the event that we aren't able to do so despite our best efforts we will post on the town's website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting thank you so i'll de declare a quorum present um, members here tonight uh, francois steiger phil holmans and myself I'm the chair and our new alternate member, Erica Dack. Welcome, Erica. Um, John D'Amelio is not uh, present and we have a vacancy. So please, if you're tuning in tonight, consider serving on your planning board. We definitely need a fifth member and you don't need to be an expert. You just need to be willing to, to, uh, to serve on the board. We meet uh, once a month, sometimes twice a month. Um, there's no better way to serve. So there's my sales pitch. Um, I have to declare that uh, planning board meetings are broadcast live and digitally recorded. Then we open our meetings with public comments, uh, which is a time when anyone wishing to speak on a matter that's not on the agenda this, or up for public hearing can do so. Um, and any matters up for public hearing, uh, if you're here, on some matter on the agenda, you can, we, you can speak at that time. We also allow the public uh, to have input on specific items. Uh, public comments may be limited depending on the number of people. Uh, the board will listen. We may not respond immediately to questions and concerns, but we definitely care what you have to say. So Christina, does there anybody from the public wishing to speak? Um, I have several people on this um, on Zoom that I am not certain whether they are here for something else. Uh, someone is a lot is here as M. Martinez. I'm going to unmute you. Um, could you please let us know whether or not you're here to speak on a specific uh, topic? I'm sorry. Are you there? We can't hear you if you are speaking. Okay, um, and then I do see, I'm sorry, one attendee does have their hand raised. Um, it is the person we, I just unmuted. So uh, I'm not sure if they wish to speak. We can't hear you, uh, sir or madam. If you'd like to type it into the text chat, we can uh, state it here. I also have one call in. I'm gonna allow them to speak as well because I don't know what they're here for either. Okay. I have given the directive for them to unmute, but they have not yet done so. <clears throat> All right, well, given the, uh, the sort of the unfamiliar early, unfamiliarity of a lot of people with our system, if they raise their hand, we'll try to take them out of order, okay? Just so we can progress, because I don't want to okay. hold things up. Um, nope. So our first um, order of business is minute approval. And Christina, you have two sets, but only one set is in the, two sets listed on the agenda, but we're only approving the minutes of March 4th? Uh, no, ma'am. Actually, I apologize. When I was writing up the minutes, I wrote in March 4th and February 19th. February 19th was actually approved in August. Um, okay. However, um, I meant to put in April 1st, which was also posted in the, okay. um, so those are both available for uh, review and for uh, approval this evening, March 4th and April 1st. Okay. I only saw one. Okay, so February has been approved prior. Um, I'm trying to think of one of them. I just, I don't have them up in front of me, but I have read them. One had a 4C in it. It was an item 
where the word fee was repeated twice in a sentence. It was just a typo. Okay. I think it was March 4th, I think. Okay. I don't know. Small, small minor typo. Other than that, I didn't, I didn't spot anything that needed to be changed or added to or corrected. Um, anybody else? Bill or Francois? I do have a question regarding to one of the items, and that is in the, um, the March 4th minutes on section four, it just indicates that, uh, I'm just trying to bring it up, uh, if you bear with me for one minute, while I bring up the uh, minute itself here. I think in section four, it just simply says, correspondence chair informs board that she's going to have a meeting with the TA regarding tax title and possible and possibilities going forward. I, I just think that that is, that, that was just not clear. I think it, I'm assuming this is the tax titles that were potentially available for us to uh, participate in and provide funding in order to be able to recover these uh, properties. Is that, is that correct? Um, Ms., uh, Mr. Steiger, um, that is actually the one in advance of that meeting. The, the next meeting is when you all had your uh, large discussion regarding tax title. That meeting was just that Alice had been made aware by the TA of this concept of tax title and she was going to meet with the TA so that she could report back to the board on what they were anticipating. The next meeting is when you got into the more detailed discussion of what um, you guys were going to do and the, the, the properties that were under discussion. Okay, so I, I just look at this here as being fairly vague. I don't know if there's any uh, additional wording that can be added in here to explain that. Okay, uh, I will. Why don't we add just suitable tax title properties that might be suitable for affordable housing? Perfect. Okay. okay. And again, it was my confusion that uh, prompted my, my question here. Oh, and then the only other item I had was on um, item uh, 6B. Um, I did have a question regarding uh, the solar. There was a discussion at ha uh, discussion is had of a letter to send uh, to all solar fields with regards to the requirements of their annual report, and that this report is linked to the solar certificate to their certificate to generate. I just want to ascertain that that is indeed the case here. That the reports are due to us, and without those reports, uh, they would be in violation of the, I won't call it a uh, violation, but rather I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I understand the link between that report being handed to the planning board and the certificate to generate, because that is not clear based on what I'm reading here. The discussion was had that the board wanted to make sure that they were aware of the bylaw requirement mm -hmm. with regards to the annual report and it was discussed in that hearing that uh, to make it clear to the solar fields that their adherence to the bylaws including sending in that particular report was linked to their certificate to generate okay thank you but i can make that more clear too if you would like i think it would help okay i'll clarify 6b as well maybe instead of link to a condition of or something Would that that, that, that's, that that would be excellent. It'd be a little stronger, right? I think so. And it is that a would, it will prompt the further discussions for us in the future in terms of what needs to be done in order to be ensure to ensure that we are actually getting them because I believe that as of this point, and this is beyond the approval of the minutes, but it is certainly something that we need to address again because I don't believe that at this point in time we have a full understanding of all of the uh, reports that we have received and we can discuss this here at a later time. But other than that, no, I have no further comments. Okay, uh, Bill, is there anything you want to add? No, I'm all set with the minutes. Uh, my what? picture is gone now. Can you see me? I cannot see you. Oh, well, that's a good thing, I guess, but I, don't know. I, I, I can see a blank where it says, but would you like to make a motion anyway? Well, we know your I'll voice. Make a motion that we accept the minutes as presented. For March 4th. Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is uh, point, point of order and... um, with the clerical corrections discussed. Correct. Yes. Thank you. So Bill makes the motion. Bill Homans and Francois Steiger second. Francois. All in favor of this is the minutes of March 4th. Lived all, yes. Francois Steiger, yes. 
Bill Homans, yes. Okay, moving on to uh, the April 1st minutes. Is Christina there? I'm here. Oh, I was just thinking, unless you think because of the typo, we should put it on the next meeting. Uh, I don't believe so, but if I, I, because it was not specifically listed on here, uh, we could post it out. However, it is an administrative matter. Um, but uh, you're right. If you wish to, we can we can post it out till next meeting, and it can just be included with the others I have done at that time. Yeah, just put it on the fourth. Even the fifteenth is fine. Okay. Okay. I just think where you haven't posted, it's probably you want to be careful with minutes. Is all. All right. So is is Mr. Murray in our audience here? Yes. He is. Yes, we are going to move to the 147 Williamsville Road. Oh, okay. I just wanted to know whether we should take it up in order if he was here. So, uh, Mr. Murray and I went, well, it was really his inspection, and I tagged along to, to understand what was going on to us. Oh, I'm sorry. One moment, Madam Chair. I apologize for interrupting. He was here. Oh. He is not currently on the call. He was oh. on the call. He is not currently. Well, I'll give my two cents and he'll probably be back. Do, but first of all, do we also have uh, either Mr. Smith or Sweet or Chavez from Clearway? Yes, I'll, I'll, pr I'll, um, I'll promote Mr. Smith. He's with Borrego. Yes. There he is. And do you have Bill back? Not yet? Not yet. Okay. I, I, my name has appeared now. <laughs> it seemed like it was disconnecting and then the new screen popped up. This is Dean Smith from Borrego Solar. And the M. Martunas that you were seeing before is Matt Martunas from Borrego Solar, if he oh. is connected now as well. Okay, I can, I can promote him as well. So I can fill in a little bit and then I hope Bill is going to jump back on. So Bill issued a report to which I think... Um, Mr. Smith, and was, you were copied on this, right? Yes. Yes, I was. So anyway, we took a look. It was very informative to me because I had, why I had walked solar fields before, I hadn't ever seen the battery backup system, um, which, which was really enlightening to me. And they had a very nice team of engineers who reduced some things to layman's terms, although most of the meeting was focused on it really was for fire police and EMS and how you respond to issues at the solar field. Um, but one of the things that the, the engineers told me is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard for us uh, to think about what kilowatt hours mean, but they said they, that this, their field equipped now with the backup could power roughly 500 homes, which is, um, you know, there's only a thousand homes in Harberton. So it gives you some idea of, how solar has progressed to a really mainstream source of power. Um, and I, when we were there, um, I also noticed there, there were a lot of things that were being followed up on, the planning, the mowing, uh, um, the, uh, it was you know, very professionally done. Um, the issues that were raised really were a safety issues, very significant. And we think we need to be aware of some of those issues as a planning board going forward. And particularly with, um, with developing some regulations around the battery systems. So these battery systems for a field this size were, I mean, just for a frame of reference, maybe the size of two semi-trailers. They're big, large installations, but not in relation to the size of the solar field, perhaps. And they're cement buildings um, with just battery packs um, or batteries um, stacked up in them. And they have uh, their own fire suppression um, and climate control systems connected to them. Um, and they, of course, store all that power and then um, can send it off peak. And they can also store it to level out the supply in the lines, is my understanding. Um, so I just want to let, let you guys know what we were up to. Um, if you want to, his bill back? I'm here. Oh, 
He's oh, here. No, not me, Bill. I'm sorry. Bill Murray is not here, though. I did email him to see um, if he was experiencing trouble. Well, I, we could ask Mr. Smith. Um, did you agree with his assessments by and large? We all got a copy of this report. Yeah, they were typical uh, issues to bring up at this point. Uh, there wasn't really anything that wa was a major problem in there. They were minor things like adjusting the, the amount of the decommissioning bond that's in place to cover uh, the final size of the, of the system so that you're fully uh, protected there. Uh, some comments regarding the stormwater management area for the project that uh, Matt is working on uh, fixing right now. Um, and then some requests for some additional information and some help on the energy storage units that, that you already mentioned. Um, I don't have his note open, but I can and see if there's something else that, that's of importance. Hi. So, Dean, this is Matt. Hi, hi, Alice. Uh, we, we met on site. This is Matt Martunis, the project manager from Borrego. I come, I'm coming up as Erica, my wife. I, I apologize. I'm on, I'm on, uh, I'm on her laptop. Uh, for some reason, that was me calling in earlier, but for some reason, my microphone on my computer was broken. So, I apologize for that. So, I can I post the email from Miss uh, from Mr. Murray, um, Madam Chair, if you'd like to review it with everyone. Oh, well, that's all right. He can speak to it, and we've all got copies. Sure. So, so, so again, this is Matt. So, um, oh, you, you know, don't have a copy though. Would you like a, would you like her to post it? Uh, if you, if you'd like to post it, that'd be great. And we can all sure. just talk through the, through, the, through the, uh, the notes. I do have it in front of me, but, um, if you'd like to post it, we can talk through each item. That'd be great. All right. Then I'll, yep. Thanks. Okay. Great. So, so if, you know, per the order of conditions uh, in the town of Hubbardston, um, the first thing that I needed to do was to schedule a, a meeting uh, with the fire department, the police, the EMS, the first responders to have an on-site meeting to talk about uh, the facility, to talk about um, uh, the system itself, its capabilities, and what happens if there's ever, you know, an issue on site that relates to, you know, a, a police call or, or, or a, a fire uh, related incident. So I thought that meeting went really well. And, um, you know, with that meeting, I, these fir the first note here, it talks about a NEMA 4 water waterproof enclosure and it talks about a NOx box. So those, those two items there were items that I recommended to both the police and the fire. Um, that road is, I, I think it's about 2,000 feet long from the entrance of Williamsville Road into the, into the site. So, you know, I, I thought it was in the best interest of, of all parties to make sure we have a Knox box on site where the police department, the fire department, uh, and the operations and maintenance team can store keys to the site. So the site is gated off, it's locked, uh, no one can gain access. So we do have, a, we will be putting a Knox box on site. Um, I'm in the process of procuring that Knox box now. In order for me to do that, um, I need the fire department to give me uh, a specific form that I need to send into the manufacturer to, to, to buy that, that Knox box. So the fire department has to give me, um, there's, a, there's a list of criteria that's on there that's, that's, uh, that's related to that, that particular fire department, the Huntington Fire Department. So I have an email into the fire department requesting that, um, that document. And once I receive it, I will purchase the, lock, uh, the Knox box. The NEMA 4 enclosure, that's just a, a, it's, it's like a waterproof or fiberglass enclosure that I'm going to have by the entrance to the site so that, you know, a year from now, five years from now, when uh, a first responder shows up at the site, um, they will have a set of plans and they'll have an emergency response plan and they can have, you know, they can even store their own notes in there uh, just so that they can, they, they know what to do in the case of emergency. So, um, I will sit down with the police. I'll sit down with the fire department, um, you know, as a, as a follow-up to, to, to our, to our walkthrough, just to kind of put any notes that they may have or, 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 you know, drawings or, uh, contact, uh, information, what have you by the gate. So, so that item number one, NEMA 4 enclosure in the Knox box, those are recommendations made by, by, by myself, by Borrego, uh, for the best interest of the fire and the police. Great. 
Uh, item number two uh, talks about, um, we asked for additional clarification regarding turning off the power prior to the first responders responding to the site. So this, this sentence is actually correct, right? And it's kind of a catch 22 and it's something that needs to be noted and something that we want to capture and put on the, uh, uh, in the NEMA 4. So, so you have the, the PV system, right? And you have the battery storage system. And if there was ever an incident uh, within, the, within the array, um, the fire department or the first responder would want to disconnect power from the street. Um, and then, you know, then we, we know that the power is isolated essentially from the, the inverters to the switch gear and to the transformers and back out to the street. So they know they can isolate the electricity other than the solar modules as we had discussed before. So it's imperative that they shut off the power at the street in order to do that. But we also said, if there's, a, if there's a fire in the battery storage units, uh, it is not in the best interest to disconnect the power of the street because the fire suppression system needs that energy. So the clarification, uh, yeah, I mean, it, is, it says it right there verbatim. And, th and that's, a, that's a note that um, we passed on to the fire department and that's something that should be uh, made aware of and make sure it's an emergency response plan and placed into that NEMA 4 enclosure. So I'd, be, I'd like to interject here really quick just to let you know that Bill Murray is now on, but he is on a phone call. He, there is no video. That's okay. Um, hi, hi everybody. Hi. Um, Hello. Mr. Smith is walking us through your letter a little bit. I get, oh, wait, was it? Uh, this is Matt. It was Matt Martinez. Yeah. 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 No, sorry, I'm sorry. Got you guys mixed up. It's okay. Yeah. And he's, he's talking about, you know, what we talked about on the site, which is, um the trickiness of, of of killing the power if you were to have a battery incident which needs the power and how that needs to be sorted out in a uh in the set of directions emergency response directions um right which we don't need to get in too far into the weeds because that's really your area of expertise with them to resolve but give the public at least some idea um, of some of the issues we're trying to address um three more relates to me i asked for to help them set up if they are aware of regulations and specifications that govern either existing solar facilities or new solar facilities they're proposing battery backup systems um done a little bit of uh homework on that since then um i gather the office of energy efficiency and renewable energy um may be able to help me with that um we do have the mass general laws does have a chapter section one of 164 that's energy storage systems i need to to um to take a look at but again if you're aware of any regulations that exist that we might use as a model i'd really appreciate your help on that yes ma'am I, I talked to my battery storage uh team this morning that's you know that's that's really uh falls with our development group more so than our EPC group. Um, the battery storage is, is, is part of our development team. So I, I did talk to Eleni. Um, she, she was the one who conducted the, the technical oversight, the engineering piece to the yes. battery storage. So um, uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, I made Eleni aware of, of what, what you're trying to accomplish. And you know, we just need to set aside some time and, and she'll look at it internally and see what, what she can offer and what she can, which, what she can assist with. So we can, we can make that connection between us uh, through email, we can set up a conference call and we can we can take that another step forward. Well, I'd appreciate your help. Not asking to you to invest a lot of time, just point us in the direction of some, you know. Absolutely. Ms. Libdahl, this is Dean Smith. If I could just interject. Okay. I, I haven't seen sections in other town bylaws yet, really? at least in the towns that I've contacted. So Hudson will sort of be ahead of the curve on that if you do add a section regarding energy storage as it's a fairly new technology. But um, there have been changes in some of the uh, state regulations recently, and there's a new program called Clean Peak. So um, we don't have any projects in your town of that nature, but those are larger energy storage only projects. Yes, um, there so there's, some. yeah, there's a special uh, section in the state regulations about that so you may be begin seeing that and when it's energy storage only it doesn't really fit into the standard solar bylaw section so um, you'll be prepared for it if you do add a section regarding the energy storage 
component? Well, I certainly don't have any intention of like trying to really understand your field too much. But if I could write the kind of provision that it would be allowed and then is subject to compliance with, you know, just some basic mm -hmm. ground rules for it, it would, it would help me a lot. So you think there are state regulations as well as FERC regulations, as well as a- uh, Well, it's a state level program, uh, the Clean Peak program. They're promoting the, the energy storage only type of installations now as well. Okay, well, thank you. I don't want to dwell on it longer. So, uh, Bill, I'll, now that you're on, do you want to discuss the other factors a little bit or, or we can continue on? Um, well, the I'm letter does pretty about. much summarize it. Um, item four is they, they, the permit requires an as built plan done by a surveyor to show that they have built what they said they were going to build. And uh, Matt says that they're working on that. Okay. We are. That should be completed by the end of next week. And we're also okay. uh, working on record drawings for the system itself as well. Right. So that'll all be incorporated. I have my survey scheduled uh, for today and, and tomorrow to be on site. Um, so they'll, they'll survey the existing conditions and then they'll provide us an as-built drawing and we'll incorporate uh, any changes made in the field and we will uh, we will submit that uh, to the town um, once we're prepared to submit for uh, authorization to generate. Okay, if we move to the next item regarding the bond, is there an issue with that figure between parties? No, actually you, you missed one, uh, the pond. Yes, the pond, yeah. he already addressed the pond. He says it's being- they're, on Yeah, they're working on fixing the so, problems there. Yeah, I can speak to that. We, we, we're going to have uh, a little bit more rainfall, I believe, possibly over the weekend into Monday. So my plan, so the pond right now, obviously, it's, 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 it collected a lot of silt and it collected a lot of uh, loam and, 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 some, and some debris, some slash that came off the side of that hill, you know, during construction. So I will pump out the pond um, next week, early next week, and I will muck it out. I'll take out all, all the muck that's in there. Any, any fabric or anything else and make sure that it's uh, percolating correctly and uh, yeah, put it back to the design state. Okay. Ooh. Uh, the bond, is there an issue regarding the bond between you guys or? So, this is a discretionary item. It is? It is? Yeah. Um, they permitted a 7.1 megawatt facility. When we were at the site, they said that they have a 7.3 megawatt facility. And I didn't know if the board wanted to accommodate the difference. Well, I think that, I mean, I can't speak for the whole board, but would there be any, any disadvantage to generating more power? Um, and if so, the Devon should be adjusted accordingly, shouldn't it? Yeah, and that's fine. Yeah. This is Matt, mm -hmm. um, and that's fine. So, the, so to, to Bill's point, um, the original permit was for a 7.1 7 meg, 7 megawatt system at $60,000 a, a megawatt. Um, it equated to like $425,000. The system size now, um, and it's because we, you know, I think we, I don't know if we just, uh, added modules or a module size, the wattage might have changed. It's, um, I, I, can, I can take that part of it, Matt. It was uh, when we discovered that other uh, wetland and we re redesigned the layout, <coughs> excuse me. And by that point, there were some more efficient modules available. So the footprint of the system actually got a little smaller, but because the modules, each module was producing more energy, the total system size was slightly larger. Okay, so to that point, this, the, 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 I believe the system size is gonna come in, and we'll know this on the as-built, but it's gonna come in at about 7.46 uh, megawatts. So in order to true up the difference um, uh, on that bond, I believe, I had it down for a second, I think it's about $22,000 ballpark. I mean, I can figure out the math and we can look at that, but I can just increase the bond amount to that to, to match the, the, the actual system size. 
Okay, great. Excuse me, Madam Chair, point of information. Uh, Mr. Murray may know this. When the decommissioning bond was um, negotiated, was the uh, battery taken into effect? Because I understand that this is a bond to make sure that we can take everything out. Well, if you can answer her question. It, it was a part of the plans. Um, and it, it will be covered by, uh, we're required to prepare a decommissioning plan, which will be part of the record drawing set that, that shows all of the different components that need to be uh, removed from the site to return it to its, as close to its pre-development state as possible. So um, the actual line item estimate that we did for decommissioning was actually quite a bit lower than the $425,000 that was posted. So, um, and it did include removal of those energy storage enclosures. So that, that will be part of it and, and there will be funds to cover that. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Um, we do have a fairly substantial agenda, so I don't want to, to, to spend a lot longer on this, but are there other issues that you think we need to address I guess I address that question to Bill first. Is he not there? Is he still here? Maybe we've lost him. So this is Matt again. So, yeah, Matt. so I just want to give you a, a, a quick update. So, you know, essentially the, the system itself is mechanically complete. It's 100% constructed. You know, we're currently waiting for the utility to complete their scope of work. And once they complete their scope of work, uh, we will then uh, commission the system with the utility um, to, to demonstrate that the, both the PV and the battery storage is, is working uh, correctly. Okay. Um, I need to file with the town when I'm prepared. Um, I need to pro uh, file a notice uh, requesting permission to energize the site. Um, so, you know, per the order of conditions, um, a couple of things I need. The first thing I need to do is that on-site training, which, 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 which we did. There's an operations and maintenance plan, which I will provide. Um, there's a decommissioning plan, which we will also provide. Um, and, and those are really the, 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 the four big ticket items. Um, Bill had mentioned a couple of things from our walkthrough. I mean, obviously, uh, the order of conditions don't pertain to that NEMA form, that, that knockbox. That's something that I'm recommending and something that I think is, the, is in the best interest of the town. Yep. For item number one, yeah. for item number two, I will work with the fire and the, and the, and the, uh, the police to make sure that they're, they're comfortable and, and feel safe. And then, um, uh, yeah, so the item number three and four, like the, the, the as-built and uh, cleaning out the pond, and those things will be completed within the next two weeks. And then what I'll do is I'll do a final walkthrough with my third party environmental uh, agency to confirm that the site is stable um, and that it's, it's, uh, it can be signed off on by the Conservation Commission. And then at that time, within the next say, two to three weeks, we'll be, I, that's when I'll be prepared to issue uh, or request permission to energize the site. Okay. I'm back. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Um, we lost Bill Murray for a moment, but he is back now. And uh, I did not have access to chat while my screen was shared. And Mr. Murray had said that the battery was not in the bond. I, I don't recall the battery being in part of the bond. You could be right about that, Bill. We may have posted that bond based on the original approval. And then the, the battery storage was added as an amendment. I think you, you could be right about that. Um, okay. but. There, there's not a lot involved with taking that off site. Um, everything is, is contained within the enclosure and it can just basically be loaded and, and trucked away. But it is important to us, even if it doesn't affect what the price of your bond is, that the battery system is listed. So it's part it, of the- it will, be, it will be shown on the decommissioning plan um, that, we're, that we're gonna be providing with the record set. Okay. okay. All right. Are there further questions from you, Bill, to address to them, or that you direct to the planning board? Um, I, I heard Matt talking about the energization for testing. Yes. And in the past, you have allowed them to test, and that's not considered generating. And it would be good if the board would render a decision for their benefit tonight 
unless Matt, you don't need it. No, I mean, I think obviously we, we would want the, the, the approval to, to, to commission the system with national grid and test the, the PV, the battery for sure. Um, you know, there's, a, there's, you know, if we're doing it by the book, there's a few items that I need to, to, to provide the O&M plan, the decommissioning plan, update the bond, um, and then get signed off by my third party inspector. And then at that time, we'll, we'll request a full permission to generate. Um, we would like the approval if National Grid is able to get their equipment installed, say, tomorrow, you know, they magically get it installed, would, be, would it be okay for Borrego to commission the PV in the battery storage? Um, it's only for commission purposes. There isn't, there's no, uh, there is no generating of electricity. It's only to make sure that everything's working appropriately and safely. Right, and that's what I, I'm asking the board to say is okay. So you're basically saying, can they turn on the system for testing purposes uh, after it's connected to the grid without having had their uh, certificate to generate in hand, or is it without charging rates on the certificate, be, the power being generated? I'm not sure what you're asking, Phil. So yes, I am, uh, they need to turn the system on, energize it, and connect it to the grid to calibrate it and test it and verify that it all works. They're okay. not making commercial energy, they're just calibrating, testing, and pulling it together. And in the past, we've let them do that without the certificate to generate because it's not really commercial gener generization, it is set up and, and those kind of things. Okay, so it's an issue of just, are we going to allow them to generate without the certificate for testing purposes? Correct, so only testing, uh, calibration, and test, what testing. Matt has been referring to. Alice, uh, uh, can I, Bill Holmes, make a motion? Yes, that we can yes. Allow them to do Bill, say it again, though. You faded out. Alice, Bill Homans, I would like a motion that we can allow them to turn the system on so they can calibrate it without having a permit. Okay. Is there a second? A permit to generate. A permit to generate, right. Yes, thank you. With, with the friendly amendment that this is only on a temporary basis until such testing has completed. I accept the friendly amendment. Any further discussion? Yeah, this is so. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, everybody. Um, just, just lastly, this is Matt. Like you know, per the order of conditions, I you know, there's three or four bullet points I need to get taken care of. I plan on getting those taken care of within the next two weeks or so, and then you know, I'll revisit the site. Um, it's come a long way in the last two weeks as far as stabilization and grass growth. So I feel confident that you know, within two to three weeks, we should be. I will be submitting uh, a notification to the town requesting uh, a, a full energization and operation. Um, but I'll, I'll monitor that on a daily basis. I owe you some, some information. And once I have that, I will formally submit. But I, I appreciate your time. Thank you. OK, well, we got to take a vote on this. Uh, so on the motion on the floor, unless there's further discussion, lived all I. I'm uh, um, sorry, ma'am. We haven't had a second. No, Francois did second it. No, I, I just, I just made I just a friendly amendment. A, I, I, I presented a friendly amendment, and I would like to make sure that this is read uh, in, and that we are all clear in terms of what we're voting. Can you please repeat what it is that we're voting for? Yes, there were several small amendments. Um, what I have here is a motion to allow the system to be turned on temporarily to test and only to test without their permit to generate. Yes, yeah, so, okay. What? Bill, are you okay with this? Yes, I am. Uh, actually, I was going to defer to Matt to see if he's okay with that wording. Yeah, I think that's fine. Good. Francois? Okay, Francois seconds the motion. Okay, any further discussion? If none, lift all, yes. Bill Homans, yes. Francois Steiger, yes. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. We look forward to hearing from you soon and good luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Good night. Good night. Uh, thank you. We need to progress to our A and R plans or next on the agenda. And the first one would be again. Sorry, ma'am. Um, we have an item before the A and R plans. Oh, we do. I'm sorry. We do. I'm sorry. Ed, Ed Blanchard's note to us. Um, is that there? One moment. Um, Mr. Murray, did you need to still be in the call? Can I demote you? 
Yeah, you can demote me. I'll raise my hand if I want to talk, but I was going to sit in. Okay. Okay, Bill. I'm, yeah, I don't know whether there's anything on the agenda that we need your expertise for. Okay, I'm going to promote uh, Mr. Blanchard. Let's let, yeah, let's move. I, we do have a lot of people waiting, so let's go along. Okay. I believe cool. that uh, Sue is also here with regards to this. Sue matter. Richards. Sue Roberts. Okay, so I would like to, are they there? They are now yeah. on our screen, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so this meeting comes before, this question comes before, just to sort of set the stage here. There's a request by Sue and Reed Roberts um, of the planning board um, and they're asking us to review new information and determine at our November meeting if we can whether North Comet Pond Road uh, is away in existence prior to subdivision control which was enacted in 1959 um, and uh, Sue Roberts family has owned the property for 60 years and she says in her uh, petition that DCR under the Cohen bill would only allow one subdivision of their property into one house lot. Um, and Madam Chair, um, Bill Murray is asking for permission to speak. Is it related to this item or previous item? His, uh, his hand is raised, ma'am. Okay, He's, just let uh, me just finish this thought and then I'll go back to him. Um, so their but, plan uh, is in asking that the road there, there we are. Um, we didn't come be in. recognized as a road in existence prior to subdivision control there and and the other uh, issues which go along with that which is passability and suitability of the road for the planned use they would then move a, they then want to plot use that termination to file an ANR plan with the planning board um, so that's sort of a, a short a short snapshot in <laughs> support of that argument um, Mr. Blanchard had put together a package. This is a story. This is not the first time this issue has come before the board, but there is additional documentation. There's a new board, and it, it, I, I told him that we would certainly reconsider the issue. Uh, all this information was only provided to us a few days ago, so we're not really prepared to discuss it in depth tonight, but we'll hear what they have to say, but maybe we'll backtrack for a minute and see what it is that Mr. Murray wanted to say. He's our, he's our consultant. Is, is he still there? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I just want to note that this one's come before the board at least three times since I've been a consultant for the board. And the final council who did an extensive review um, so this isn't the first time this has been brought forward. That's all I have to say. Okay. Um, we will take note of that. It's very clear from the records the petition submitted to us, that is the case. It has been before the board going back 25 years, three times. So that doesn't mean you, we can't take a look at it and we shouldn't take a look at it um, if, if there's new material submitted, which is what Ed claims there is. But we'd like to let the petitioners speak, if, if you'd like to. Sure. Good evening. I'm Sue Roberts. This is my husband, Reed. And um, you know, we have come before the planning board tonight just to ask that you review some of the research, additional research we've done regarding North Comet Pond Road as a way in existence previous, as you said, to the uh, subdivision control regulations, which were, I think, on November 12th, 1959. Uh, let me just give you a little bit of um, background before I, I turn it over to Ed. Um, we, I have owned the property since uh, 2007 when I inherited it from my mother and father, uh, Barbara and George Dunlop. And um, we actually uh, renovated uh, the little lake house that they had in conjunction with the DCR and the um, Hubbardston Conservation Commission. Um, we would like to create one just single family house lot on this, uh, from this parcel. Um, my family has had quite a long history with Comet Pond. 
my dad came out of the Navy and um, <clears throat> I, in the war in the late 40s and we had bath, we rented bathhouses at the southern end of the pond and then even bought one. And then in 1953, it was when he purchased this 17 acre parcel from um, uh, Mr. Erickson. Um, so basically Ed Blanchard has done most of the research for us on this and we would like him to present uh, our request to you this evening. Okay, um, Ed, I'm not sure this can be done in less than two hours and we've got two A and R <laughs> plans ahead of us. Do you have a short version? <laughs> Cliff notes. Cliff notes. <laughs> Um, I do think we do have a package and everybody will read that package in detail. And I do note for the record that the, there is some conflict among the legal opinions. So it's not that it's always been denied. It's, there's definitely a, a history that needs to be considered, but you also needs to be looked at. Um, but I'll let you speak for a few minutes, Ed, if there's a short version you can give us, bearing in mind we've got two a pretty full agenda after you as well. Do you want to speak for a few minutes? Mr. Blanchard, you're on mute. In the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you're gonna, you'll see a microphone if you move your mouse and the mute button, you have to can unmute the microphone. Now? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. First of all, I'd like to thank Christina for putting all of this information together and scanning it and getting it to the board. And yes, I think I can give you, um, you know, uh, the board can read the uh, all of the detail, but I think I can give you an overview in five, six minutes, perhaps right around there. Okay, go ahead. Um, the first page is we are looking to ask that uh, North Pond Road is away in existence when the subdivision control law took effect in the municip municipality having in the opinion of the planning board suitable grades and adequate construction to provide for the needs for vehicular traffic in relationship to the proposed use for the installation of municipal services to serve such. That's uh, mass law on a &R plans. The second page is just shows you that uh, when we went into subdivision control, um, November 12th, 1959, the next is a chronological report of all of the parcels that were bought and sold um, and, and accessed by this, by this path in some cases and way in other cases. Um, so I'm gonna go over, the, I'm gonna skip over that and also the eight pages of deeds that someone can look at if they wish to. And certainly if anybody uh, on the board wishes to ask me any questions at any time, please uh, please feel free to do so. Um, the next uh, exhibit is a USGS map from 1946, which uh, clearly shows um, coming off of Old Princeton Road, going through Cathedral Camp, the, uh, the way that we're we're looking at. The next one is a blow up from the 1956 Department of Interior map. And this is probably the key to our request. Because if you look at this map, it shows not only North Comet Pond Road, but all of the other roads that exist around Comet Pond, which I'm very familiar with because I live on the pond. What, what you need to look at here is they considered and the legend follows that because North Comet Pond is, a, um, is not a dotted line, it means that it's an improved road where all of the dotted lines are just dirt road. So in 1956, this road was called an improved road rather than a dirt road. And that's 1956, three years before subdivision control. The next um, map to look at is the assessor's map. And 
I put this in here because it shows the properties that abut North Connell Pond Road. And one of the questions later on that will probably be asked is what, uh, what impact would this have on the town if uh, you make the determine that it was a way in existence prior to subdivision control. And there are three parcels, the uh, Hanley parcel, the Loring parcel, and the Roberts parcel that could have one lot subdivided from their lots. So a total of three lots would be potentially possible in my opinion. And this is only because the Cohen bill will only allow in the watershed protection area that one, if, if the subdivision is gonna be made, it uh, can only be uh, subdivided once, not multiple times. Um, we'll skip over the Fletcher Tilton Whipple uh, legal uh, opinion that was back in 1995 when, when uh, Sue Roberts' dad uh, took a look at this. The next, the pictures of the road and pictures of the road and it's in good condition. It's 14 feet wide. It's gravel base. It was uh, rehabbed in 19, um, 2013 um, and is in good condition. In fact, it's probably of the other five Comet Pond roads, it's probably the second best road around Comet Pond. East Comet Pond Road is paved and that's probably why it's not number one. Um, we can skip over probably the key points, but uh, um, they just per perhaps summarize uh, some of what I've been saying. But uh, in summary, it says, the 17.7 acre parcel owned by Sue and Reed Roberts has been accessed by a way or a road prior to subdivision control effective in 11, 12, 59. This way also provides access to a total of eight lots dating as far back as 1914. This way was in existence prior to the purchase of the land by Roland Erickson and subsequent splitting it into five parcels. On the recommendation of Brian Zock and Chris Mossman, we have done extensive deed research to provide further documentation that this way was in existence prior to subdivision control and that it's definitely not a common driveway. Um, this, this road is, even though it's, a, it's a pretty much a private way, it is open to the public. Um, the uh, DCR uses this road to access their property, so it has public use as well as private use. Do, Bill, can I stop you for a second? Sure. DCR, I looked at this map of where the DCR land is, and, my, and I've looked at them, especially the assessor's map, I've looked at the, uh, the CIA, you know, the, the mapping service we have, our CAI technologies map. Uh, does, the, does the road as it stands go through the Roberts property all the way to the empty sea land? Um, no, um, it, it went, uh, as you see on the 1956 map, it went straight down past theirs, but not to the point of where the two camps were. Uh, that so, was the south you, of the- When you, uh, when south you said a minute Roberts. ago the DCR uses the land, how do they, or uses the, the road? Mm -hmm. how, how do they use it? Where do they come from? They come from Old Princeton Road and- They come from Old Princeton Road and use that as access to their DCR land. Through the Roberts property? Yes. Yes. Okay, so, okay, so, and is that route still visible and does it follow the trail shown on the map? The maps we, it goes to the pond or, or to the land south of, I guess it's uh, south of their lot, straight through it or? Uh, or turns around to get to the pond or? Actually the road, the road stops just uh, about at the Roberts property now because there was no use of it down to where those camps were in 1914. That area has grown up. However, the last picture that you see of the road that I gave you, the fire truck turnaround, and that is at the end of the road. 
actually their driveway comes off of that road, goes through DCR land, and they have a right to pass over DCR land in order to get to their home. Is there, I don't know about the rest of the board feels about this, but I think that we should do a site visit. That would be fine. Uh, Francois, can well, we do this well, at some point if we can line it up? It, it certainly is available to me because it is very close to my home and uh, I'm more than happy to do so. I do have time restrictions as you're aware. It would have to be done probably on a weekend. Okay, so maybe we can come down on a Saturday. We would call. I have a few more questions, but I don't want to cut you off. I just wanted to ask that question because you mentioned DCR. Yeah. Um, I, I don't I don't know uh, town procedures, but I believe that this is this to make this decision that is a road in existence prior to subdivision control doesn't require the planning board to to put this before the town to be accepted as a town road because it's never going to be a town road. It'll always be a private road and it'll always be maintained and snow plowed by the private owners. And that is just the same as the other five roads that are around Comet Pond. Each, each person on those roads has a right to pass over the other person's property, but they also have the responsibility of maintaining the road and also snow plowing in the winter for access. Okay. So I, I have another question, which is if you look at the assessor's record uh, of the Roberts lot, it shows it as having no road frontage. Zero, it says, for road frontage. So they're only counting where the driveway comes off. Um, In the assessor's I, map that I have? No, the, the present one that's tied to the, um, I know it's the two years out of date, but to our, uh, CAI technology maps. No, the assessors, actually it's the assessor's card, which you can get to through the mapping, lists the frontage as, as zero. I do, I do kind of understand what you're saying, but here's my problem with this, and I haven't discussed it with the board, and I'm not opining, but it seems to me that, let's say we decide that North Comet Pond Road is a public, or is a private way that was in existence, as you say, and that's suitable for development. Where, where does that road end? And the reason that's important is if it ends at, I think it could be done, the subdivision possibly, two ways. One of which is if you contend that the road continues in and goes around the pond or goes, continues in more than 200 feet and is still in use and so on and prove that, then that's your frontage. You'd have to cut it off and can create, you have to create frontage for both lots either way if you're creating new lots, right? The, um... But the, the assessor's map is, is not correct. Um, if you do the site visit, we'll be able to prove and show to you that the, the assessor's map, as it's drawn here, and even on the assessor's map that I gave you, yeah. that's, not, that's not the correct road. If you look okay. at the 56 map, that is uh, clearly the yeah. reference that and we're looking at. And you can show us if we were to take a site visit evidence of that road. Yep. Continues. Okay. And I can even sure. show you where, you know, where you see the MDC by the stripes, uh, that area, that's DCR land. And okay. Well, I think it would be helpful if you accompanied us on the walk. So I, what, I what we'll try to do is we'll try to read this package in detail. Okay. Uh, I, and take a site visit. We can't fit you on the 15th agenda because it's a hearing on a big project, but we'll put you back on the agenda for our November meeting. Okay. And I don't know that we can come to a solution, but we'll be at least be able to see what's on the ground and have digested it all. Well, I think that's exactly what the Roberts are looking for is uh, we, when, when this was put before the board in, in 2015, we, we asked for them to make a determination on whether it was a way in existence prior to 1959. They would not make that determination without us submitting an A&R plan with which we would have had to
perk the land. We would have had to subdivide the land by a survey and do engineering, all the engineering to come up with an A&R plan. We probably would have spent five or $6,000 not even knowing what their decision would be. So we asked them, just make that decision one way or the other, and then, you know, we won't have to spend five or $6,000 for an A&R plan. And we thought that was a reasonable quest at that time. And I, th I think that the, the, the issue comes in is if you accept the road going down to their property, it, it's what happens at their lot line to that property. That's where, that's where we need to think about it. And I think if, the, if you the, determine uh, that the, the right of way has been abandoned basically because nobody's used it, it still, it still wouldn't mean if the road exists, you couldn't build on it, but you would have to build like a, you'd have to build the frontage up to par and you'd have to put a cul-de-sac in it or, you know, the frontage to make it match. Uh, I, think, I think when you do the site visit, you will see that that's not the case. They have more than enough frontage, not only for their own property, but also if they uh, carved out a lot, they would have 200 feet of frontage on. But, but the issue is, does the, do, do the butters still use that area? Has it been a continuous use? It's in continuous use and has been since 1953 when they built the house. So other people still tra traverse it? Yeah. Use it? Yeah. All the time. Okay. All right. That's really an important fact. So I will try to get probably a Saturday morning. I'll pull my board in the next week or two and we'll get down and take a look. Okay. Um, this Saturday is my wife's birthday and we're going to be... <laughs> We'll make it a week from Saturday. Can a we week shoot? from Saturday would be fine. Perfect. Right. We'll notify you. I'm so not I available. Yes. Can we do it on the seventeenth. What it, what day is the seventeenth? It's a Saturday. Oh, that is. I'm not available. Oh, that's two weeks from now. I'm not available on the tenth. Okay, is uh, Francois? Could you do the seventeenth on Saturday? I can't do the seventeenth. No, <laughs> you can't do the 17th. How about a Sunday morning walk, anybody? Are we, we have a lot of Madam going? Chair? Yeah, I can do the 10th. Unless of you want to post this for a public meeting, we do not want a quorum of the planning board going on the site walk. But I can post this for a public meeting, but that means the public would be uh, invited to come along. Well, I would have no problem with that. I wouldn't either. Um, How about the 11th? I can do the 10th the or 11th. 10th or 11th, it can, Bill, was it, Bill, they had a problem? You have the 11th? I have the 11th. I, I have a wedding on the 10th. All right, let's, let's shoot tentatively for the 11th of October, can, which is a Sunday, right? Can Francois make it? No. I, I would hope I can make it. I, as a matter of fact, no, I apologize. I cannot make the 11th. My daughter is actually leaving uh, on that day and I have to take her to the airport. Can do? Well, um, I'd be willing. Well, uh, we're, we're getting bogged down here. Let let Christina pull people and see when we can do it. And we will get back to you. And again, we don't have to have the whole board. I'd be willing to go twice with you on the tenth with some and on the eleventh with others if that's a better fit for the committee. The weekend of the tenth does not work for me at all. Okay. Okay. Well, right, why don't we coordinate we be, this here for Christina? We'll have. Yeah, I will Christina. contact everyone and pull them and then figure out where we're going. Madam Chair, I'm sorry. I just noticed something in the chat. Um, remember, um, Mr. Murray said that no serve, not no, just a survey is needed. Engineering is not needed. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that that was read into public record because the chat is not available on the um, the screen. Um, do you want to let Patch Bill in and let him make that statement on the record? Is he still there? Uh, he is still here. What is he saying? I, I something about uh, uh, engineering is not needed. Mr. Murray, you are now unmuted if you're there. How about now? Yes. Tell us about private ways in existence, what you have to say. <laughs> well, a survey is needed. Engineering and all that is not needed. That, that's incorrect. You have to have a surveyor say where the road is. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. I don't believe you can come before the planning board with an A&R without a full set of plans as to where the house would be and all of that engineering. 
An ANR requires frontage and access on a way. You don't have to show them anything other than that. And and you got to show right, where the right. So, Bill, is. I think the the question what it would be assuming that the the road is up to the par and the dates bear out and the rest of the criteria is met. I think the question is, does the frontage extend far enough into their property and, and is it been in use? And I think it'd be helpful to take a look at it, wouldn't it? Does there need to be, for us to say as a planning board that the road is adequate, does that require a survey? Well, a surveyor is the only person that can say where the road is, where the frontage is, and whether it's sufficient, et cetera. So, so you, you think a, a, obviously you're not suggesting a full survey of the, are you thinking, talking about the, a full survey of the whole road to make that determination? Uh, I'm just saying, I don't think that the previous board said that we need a survey plan because we can't make a determination as to whether it's sufficient without a professional stamp on the plan. You, you can make a determination that it's a way in existence, but how do you know whether it extends far enough, et cetera, et cetera? That's not the planning board. Yeah. Well, okay. Let me interject uh, here. Um, we certainly realize that we would come before the board with an ANR plan and a full ANR plan. Um, I think what we're asking you is, to make the determination on whether it's a way in existence prior to subdivision control. And that's either it is or it isn't. After that, whether we have frontage and everything else to qualify for an ANR plan, that would be our responsibility to survey and get to the board along with our ANR plan. And Ed, I don't agree. I think that you need both of those things at the same time. Otherwise, you're asking the planning board to make an uninformed decision. Well, you have the information regarding the way in existence, and that's, you know, that's what we're requesting. Bill, I think he's saying you don't need to, you don't need to have an ANR plan, I don't believe, to make a decision on whether this road should be on the road list in Hubbardston because it does qualify, whether it's for the Roberts or anybody else, the DCR or whatever, um, the planning board, I think, has the right to make that determination. And I'm just saying that I don't think that we have sufficient... No, I can't hear you. I, I don't think that without a survey, you have sufficient information because then you're relying on information that isn't provided by a registered professional that's just my opinion but what the con what's confusing me is what are you talking about a survey of or would you say the applicant has to survey the entire length of the right-of-way yeah to get that determination i think that if you make a determination without a survey plan you don't have sufficient information uh, I, a few years what, We'll take that. Okay, well, let's take this up again. Let us take a site visit. Let us look into some of these issues and um, we'll put it on again on the agenda for November. What is the date of our November meeting, Christina? I believe it's the 4th, ma'am. November 4th. I'm sorry, it's it's the 5th. It is the Thursday, 5th. November 5th. And we'll try I, to. I think that's a, a very good way to proceed to do the, uh, take a look at it. Because I think that when you see it, when you, where you see their houses, where you see the end of their property and the beginning of the property, and you see the length of the road, I think it will be clear that they have enough frontage to do it. But irrespective of whether they have frontage or not frontage, what we're asking for, is there enough proof that we have given you that this was a way in existence prior to subdivision control? You're not aware of any plan that exists for that road by chance. Um, we have 
we have some maps that uh, yes we have we have some plot plan maps of of the roberts property that are engineered but there's no like re recorded plan of the houses coming down that show the road where you could do a like a compilation of those plans and save the field work um perhaps not we'll look into it okay we All will right. and we'll look at the standard that applies and the we will most like important to information we'd be more than willing to provide okay excellent all right we will we will be in touch and we'll put you on the agenda for the fifth all right and francois <laughs> if uh, you want to do a uh, walk of the road tomorrow morning i could do that with you tomorrow morning if that's i apologize and I, I i do have uh to be somewhere else tomorrow uh, um, let christine of, work out the logistics we'll morning. work it out with christine and with the uh with alice and i can do it during the week with you if that's better for you thank okay, you great thanks Ed. thank you, thank you, very you. Much for time. mr and mrs Robert. Thank, thank you bye-bye thank, thank you all right um we need to move on to our next item, which is in fact an ANR plan. Are the Lannies here or their engineer? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Laney is here. Give me one moment. I'm gonna move everybody around here. Okay. She does this. Where's Lee? What? Where's Lee moving? We don't <laughs> We still have the Roberts with us. There he goes. Okay. We're late. I know. <laughs> Not chasing you out. You're welcome to stay. Lenny, are you there? Yes, we do not have video, however. Thank you, Christina. No problem. And Miss Lenny, you re refresh my memory. Um, you don't have your surveyor here, is that correct? Uh, no, we do. John Farnsworth is our, um, he should be. Oh, he is here. Okay, yeah. thank you. He yep. is here, Christina? He's right here. Mr. Farnsworth, I've, I've promoted you and you may unmute yourself. Does everybody else, Bill and Francois, have the plan in front of them? I do have it here. Okay. Before, before Mr. Farnsworth starts, there's a little circle. I, I looked at this plan, I puzzled with it for a while. But the, in the upper left-hand corner, there's a circle uh, that's really instructive as to what they're doing here, what the land look, looks like now, which is the, the black portion minus the two pieces were cut out. So it's, and what they're going to end up with is essentially three, not quite parallel, but three lots that go from the road back to the, the back. And, and combine the piece on the, the right-hand side of the property with number 11 to do that. Does it make sense? It, made, it took me a while. I'm not the most uh, astute at plans, but. So if Mr. Farnsworth wants to present it, though, go ahead. Um, Mr. Farnsworth, we all have a copy of the plan. Well, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, we're talking about property that's between uh, Route 68 and the Providence Worcester Railroad line on Morgan Road. And uh, you explained it with <laughs> great proficiency. Uh, uh, it took me quite a while to figure out what we we're doing here, and I tried to put notes and shapes on here that you know brought us to that end. Uh, the we're talking about three pieces of property, uh, that dark shape that encompasses nine and eleven is owned by Stephen Laney uh, individually, and uh, he and Diane occupy. Uh, number nine Morgan Road and Mr. and Mrs. Fox are at 11 and uh, we're taking that large shape that vacant piece of property and uh, dividing off parcels B and C uh, the C parcel that's adjacent to the 
rail line that looks like an upturned hatchet is being adjoined to the Fox property and parcel B is being added to uh, 9 Morgan Road uh, uh, where the existing house is uh, Stephen and Diane's house. Okay. Um. I'm willing to entertain questions from the board. We did, I did go through the checklist. We could do it on, we could do it aloud. Um, Christina probably has checked it too. I'm, yes, Christina? Yes, ma'am. Um, so the items checked off is, if I can read against your notes, we have the property boundaries, the north point, the date, the scale, the record owner, um, the Mr. Farns with the registered surveyor, the Worcester District Registry of Deed references, the areas of each lot, um, the data sufficient to determine location, direction, and length of every street and way line, uh, lot line and boundary line monuments or references necessary to establish the lines on the ground. Five, uh, item five is where practical boundary lines of contiguous and adjacent land and names of owners, which are included. Um, location of all permanent monuments, properly identified, location of all um, names of, and present widths of non-public private ways. We don't have private ways on this. Morgan's a public road, right? Um, suitable space to record the endorsement of the planning board, which we have, zoning classification and location of any zoning district boundaries. This is all in the uh, residential agriculture district, I guess. Uh, the creation of any new lots, remaining land uh, in frontage of, of land and ownership of the applicant shall be shown. That's all shown. Location of existing buildings. There is no building, right, Mr. Farnsworth, on lot A? Uh, on the lot, uh, I was very careful about labeling these because the predecessor plans are on record. Uh, uh, you know, become confusing, uh, but uh, lot L, 2020A yes. uh, is vacant land. Uh, okay. There's no no structures or utilities there. But it's a buildable lot, it looks like. I mean, it would have to perk and so on, but it's got the dimensions. Yes, and I, I, I believe they actually have had uh, soil observations done and uh, it seems to be well suited. Right, well, our, an a &R plan doesn't give you building rights, it just says you meet the frontage and so forth, which it seems to. Okay, so then location of any wetlands. There are no wetlands on this? Uh, it didn't appear to be, and I put a statement on there that says that we uh, exceed the minimum. Uh, yes, I saw that statement, which is an allowed option, as opposed to delineating them. Um, and and you're, again, the disclaimer that the ANR doesn't constitute compliance with zoning, which I saw on here somewhere, right? Uh, I think it's on the left, uh, uh, up above the uh, above the floodplain. Sorry. Yep. Okay. So, um, do we have questions from the rest of the board? I have none else. Francois, I, I do not have any questions, and uh, I'm fine with what I have seen. You want to make a motion to approve? No, I, make a motion I apologize. Uh, I apologize for interrupting. Uh, this is an approval not required. The board cannot vote to approve yeah. it. What you can state, though, is that you have the intention to sign it, oh, and as such, it. we will yeah. we will meet together and sign this document. Sorry, she, she's right. No, you're right. It isn't really by definition. It's not approval. Okay. Is there anybody that would have problems signing this document for any reason because it doesn't conform in your opinion? So if Bill Holman's no, I will sign. Okay, so um, perhaps we can come up with a time where we can maybe sequentially uh, sign these down at the hall with Christina, a time when we just would show up. And if the next one similarly is ready for signing, do the two at the same time. Yes, ma'am, I'll, I'll, I'll negotiate the logistics on that. Okay, so Excuse Mr. Farnsworth, I think you're in good shape. Excuse um, me. We will sign it, yes. Sorry. Okay. Uh, if I may. Yes. Um, I just want uh, to be able to replace what you have um, only because my name is spelled incorrectly on the plan. 
So when we go to record it, I just want to make sure that my name, my first name only has one N. Oh, I see. So yeah, sorry. So actually the, uh, I saw it spelled both ways in the deed descriptions. <laughs> yep, there's an error. Well then perhaps if the plan doesn't need to be withdrawn, it would just be in future documents, you'd put also known as, you know? Yeah. Um, could we uh, cross through that extra N and put an initial, ma'am? Um, the only problem is, is we would have to then have the plans compared to make certain that what we receive next is the same one that was just uh, reviewed by the board. So if you want to draw a line through that extra N and initial it, that is absolutely acceptable to me. Is that acceptable to the board? I don't know whether you can do that. Ask Mr. Ferns with. Uh, I believe you can. I think that's perfectly okay if everybody's in agreement. Okay, then we'll have Christina make that agreement and we'll sign it with that change. Sounds good to me. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Well, thank you everybody for coming. We will try to do it the next really certainly within the week, the first part of the week or maybe tomorrow. We'll have to work that out. Well, thank, thank you very much. Uh, we love to work in Hubbardston and it's a pleasure. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank the board. I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. I'll be in contact regarding uh, when the uh, document is fully signed. That'd be fantastic. If you need anything in the meantime, just let me know. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Christina. Thank, Thank you. you, Diane. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, I've lost my agenda. Oh, no, here we go. All right. Um, okay, so we have another ANR plan. This is by uh, Dawn and Francis Notice on Old Westminster Road. And is there an uh, engineer here, Christina? Or a... No, ma'am. Um, they were um, sent out the same notification as the rest of the board, but they are not here. Uh, about 10 minutes ago, I emailed them to let them know they were next on the agenda um, because I still hadn't seen them. Uh, but I have gotten no response back and they are not in attendance. Well, we I think we can take it up anyway. If we have questions of all that we need answers to, we'll just not mute it or withdraw it or anything, right? So no ma'am, I just don't think we've ever reviewed an ANR where the applicant wasn't present. I just I don't know if they need to be present for this. I don't I think we can review it without them. Okay ma'am. Yeah, it's been a formal submission. Um Although what I would like to ask, which I guess we don't have the, maybe we don't have the authority to ask, but um, the parcel S, you know, the explanation for why they're carving out this triangle. I assume it's a, a side yard setback, but. They didn't, did they indicate they were coming? I got no indication they were coming, ma'am. All right. Well, does the rest of the board feel we can go ahead? Well, I do have that same question, and that is, is I'm trying to understand the purpose of the uh, the changes that are being presented here, and that clearly is not something for me to. I mean, I, I certainly cannot understand. I, I do not understand what this is, and I would like to ask that question. So, having the owner of the property or the person or persons who prepared this available would definitely be helpful. Well, and I I have to agree with Francois. Uh, okay. Alice, I'd rather wait till the applicants are here to present their what they want to do. Okay, Christina, I don't know whether you you're going to try to reach him again. Um, I have emailed uh, the applicant. Um, I will email him again. We could pause for a minute. Know that there's a question. You want to try to to call? Them I'm doing the that now, ma'am, and hope and if they can jump on before then. Uh, the end of the meeting, perhaps we can ask the, whatever questions the board has. In the meantime, would we like to move ahead to um, MRPC and Mr. Hume? Yeah, unless they're going to pick up the phone right away. They haven't, huh? No, it's just ringing. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't have a phone number except a work phone number, and I can't imagine that they're 
they're oh. at work that late now. Well, I just hate to to uh, put them off another two weeks, but I can email and let them know that you know we can't approve their ANR without um, asking those questions and uh, yeah, see if they well just say we don't. We, there were questions we'd like to ask before we approve, right? Right. Rather than we can't. Okay. Um, I think there's. So we could progress to Mr. Hume, and then if they hop on, take them out of order. Would that be okay with everybody? I, I'm fine with that. So okay. nice I did. I mean, I did check through the the checklist, but it's it's it would be nice to know the answer to that question. So let's wait and see if they'll pick up. Is Mr. Hume with us yet? I know we told him to come late. He looks muted. I have unmuted him, and I've also promoted Mr. Voss, who is also here. Well, yeah, very good. Both here. Okay. Can, can you hear? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, Mr. Hume and Mr. Voss. Hello. Hello. Good to see you guys again, or hear you guys again. I don't see you. Um, so they're here tonight to present the uh, services and facilities recommendations. And you should have read that document. It was a fairly short document for you folks um, in the uh, in the accompanying documents. So you want to do a little presentation for us? Oh, One of you I, two? I would like to. Yes, thank you. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, Jonathan has been working on the inventory and analysis uh, section of the services and facilities. And uh, I believe that that's about 95% complete. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I reviewed uh, Jonathan's work and uh, I took a stab at putting together a rough draft of uh, goals, objectives, and recommendations uh, for the planning board. And as I said, uh, it's just a draft and it's for discussion purposes. Uh, it's not set in stone, obviously. Uh, and uh, I hope everybody has uh, taken a glance at it before the meeting. Uh, but if you haven't, we can, of course, take comments over the next two weeks. And we can go through Christina. Uh, if you can send your comments to Christina, that'd be wonderful. Uh, and then Christina could forward the, the comments to, uh, to me. Uh, so uh, I know that uh, Ryan McLean, your town administrator, uh, did take a, a look at the recommendations and I did receive some comments from Ryan, which is, which is good. Uh, he had some very good comments. Uh, so uh, like this is not the entire master plan chapter, as I indicated before. Uh, Jonathan's inventory and analysis is probably about uh, 12 to 15 pages. So on top of this, it'll be about 20 pages or so. Uh, so it starts off with uh, a goal uh, which is to provide excellent cost-effective, accessible facility services and programs uh, reflecting values respectful of our ages and diversity, which through collaboration contribute to a high quality, safe, civil, healthy, and sustainable community. And uh, then it lists uh, a total of six objectives uh, after it uh, to attain that goal. In going into the recommendations, uh, we've got eight recommendations uh, listed out um, so far. Uh, I received one or two comments on, from Ryan, so there will be one or two extra uh, recommendations at least, and from others that I received from the board. Um, <clears throat> but the recommendations, number one, it starts off with regionalization of services and consolidation. Uh, and Hubbardston should continue to explore regionalization opportunities with neighboring towns. Uh, and I was informed that you already have an animal control officer. Uh, you have building, uh, veteran dispatch, and accounting. And uh, Ryan was asking if there was any possible way where we could pinpoint something uh, where regionalization with other communities would make sense for the town of Hubbardston. Uh, so we can give that, that some thought. Uh, one 
uh, beneficial thing about regionalization, uh, MRPC has a district local technical assistance program. Uh, so we can do feasibility studies or any kind of regionalization studies uh, at no cost to uh, the town of Hubbardston. So uh, if we can pinpoint something down, uh, it would be beneficial to the community uh, to uh, apply to MRPC's DLTA project uh, to uh, region, do a regionalization study. Regionalization uh, generally will save the community uh, uh, time and uh, money. So moving on to recommendation number two, uh, there was a report done back quite some time ago, uh, about 11 years ago from Mass Department of Revenue, DOR, uh, Financial Management Review. Uh, and uh, it was done for the town of Hubbardston. It was completed uh, by DOR. And the town should take another good hard look at this because uh, I suspect that maybe not all of the recommendations uh, have been implemented uh, throughout this report. So uh, it, it'd be good to take another look at it and see if there could be any cost saving measures that could be implemented to benefit the community. Uh, the report is online and uh, I can even uh, refer to a website uh, in the text. I'm thinking of that so that folks would know exactly where that document is. Uh, moving on to uh, a recommendation number three <clears throat> would be uh, establish a master plan implementation committee. Uh, I think that it would be prudent to start thinking about that uh, right about now because your master plan should be finished in in the winter sometime. And last thing that us planners want to see happen is to see a plan just uh, placed up on a shelf. We don't want that to happen. We've um, uh, seen some communities have the planning board uh, be the implementation committee. Uh, we've also uh, seen some planning boards form a subcommittee uh, uh, of uh, two or three people on the planning board. We've also seen uh, an implementation committee made up of someone from the Board of Selectmen, someone from the planning board, someone from the Conservation Commission, someone from the DPW, a variety of, uh, of uh, resources there. So I think that it would be prudent for the town to start thinking about putting that implementation committee together. Uh, right about now. Uh, it could meet maybe quarterly, and it would be really good to brief the Board of Selectmen uh, on the plan's progress uh, every quarter or, or maybe uh, even just twice a year, but just to keep the entire town, uh, the entire community in the loop of what's happening uh, with the master plan so that you don't lose momentum, so that you can keep moving forward. Number four, um, continue efforts to coordinate town and community services to the benefit of Hubbardston residents. Uh, Hubbardston has used resources to promote two-way communication uh, between citizens and town government, uh, including its website and Facebook. And I did receive a comment here uh, from Ryan. Uh, the town does provide a monthly newsletter, uh, one to two email blasts per week in an e annual uh, mailing uh, with town meeting warrant. And uh, Ryan is thinking maybe there are ways to improve on, on what the town is doing. It does sound like you're, you're doing quite a bit there. Uh, moving on to number five, uh, we have uh, continued to pursue grant opportunities under the Mass Green Communities Program. Uh, the Green Communities Program is beneficial to communities in terms of uh, energy savings. You can apply for, uh, like, uh, I work for the town of Townsend on this program, and uh, we get some new boilers uh, for their school district, uh, which was wonderful. You can apply for up to $250,000 annually. It's a competitive grant. And uh, I understand that Ryan is working closely with uh, MRPC and he is interested in putting together a competitive grant. One beneficial thing 
that you might want to consider that many of other towns, most other towns have done under this, uh, is form an energy committee and then implement the grant, and look for other opportunities for energy efficiency. Uh, so that's something that the town probably should look into having an energy committee. Uh, next, uh, under number six, we have uh, training materials for new board committee commission members. And one nice thing that the Citizen Planner Training Collaborative, uh, it's, it's, uh, I can refer to the website once again, uh, they do offer annual training for new and returning planning board members and zoning board members. I've gone to a number of their annual conferences and uh, MRPC does uh, sponsor or host their, their workshops too uh, for uh, any kind of training for planning board members and uh, other municipal officials. So uh, I, I would highly recommend that, especially for uh, newer planning board members. Uh, also, Massachusetts Municipal Association uh, offers a lot of training opportunities for the selectmen and other municipal uh, officials too. So um, highly encourage uh, any kind of training out there for, for folks. <laughs> Moving on to number seven, um, expand the town's information technology uh, by being aware of and utilizing uh, Mr. Mapper. Uh, Mr. Mapper is something uh, that MRPC has for free that can be used for uh, conservation commissions, planning boards. Uh, you can basically go in and look at all these different data uh, layers and you can even form your own maps. You can take a look at where the wetlands are on the maps. You can take a look uh, at what's been built. You can look for uh, even things like brownfields, although Hubbardston doesn't have uh, any, if, if any, brownfields, but there are just a lot of uh, data resources on, on Mr. Mapper uh, that the town can take advantage of, and it's for free for the community. And we will even come in and provide training uh, to the planning board or the town administrator, uh, conservation commission, uh, her, whomever. And, um, Ryan was saying that you already have online building permitting, which is wonderful. Uh, you have uh, based usages for the town clerk and a long-term IT infrastructure uh, plan. Uh, so if there's anything else out there that any, anybody can think, think of uh, that could benefit the town, we can include that into the recommendations too. Uh, then finally, uh, we've got to develop a permitting guidebook. That can be really good. It can really streamline the permitting process. Uh, developers can take a look at it. They know exactly what they, they'd have to do. Uh, so it just makes it easier on the, on the planning board, the conservation commission and uh, everybody else. Uh, if a developer can have a permitting guidebook and know the appropriate steps that, that they have to take. So uh, also under MRPC's DLTA program, District Local Technical Assistance Program, we've put together uh, permitting guidebooks for a few communities uh, at no cost uh, to the town. We put one together for Shirley. I think we put one together for Groton uh, in one or two other communities as well. Uh, so that would be something to think about as well. <laughs> so let's, basically what I've, what I've got here, and uh, as I indicated before, it's not set in stone by any means. Uh, we want comments from you folks uh, so that we can come up with uh, a, a, a real good set of implementable uh, recommendations, no sky in the pie or any, uh, pie in the sky or anything like that, uh, in input from, from you folks, and I'm gonna send it out to uh, Ryan again too, uh, so that he could take a good look hard, a uh, good hard look at it, and uh, so we can come up with something that uh, is is the best for the town. Great, John. Can I can we ask open up for some questions? Oh, absolutely. Any anybody else want to start? 
Bill Francois. Hey. <laughs> All right. So, um, so when you were when you were talking about which I wasn't actually aware of all these things the shared facilities that we already do some of mm -hmm. um, that Ryan was listing yeah. out, would that be part of the the, the narrative that precedes this um, yes. yes so you would you you would have a list of those so you'd be know what they are I think yes. that's great to know what they are okay I'll um, do that and also you probably heard from Ryan about the regionalization of um, emergency dispatch are we're putting in a new cell tower for emergency I, services but the yes. sort of silver lining to that is that once it goes up and not only will it improve cell service for all the emts and fire and everybody but it'll create a space that's, that commercial cell phone cell phone providers could um rent and mm -hmm. put their whatever you would call it, the receivers on the tower. So it would be worth a note somewhere in this among your services. It's a brand new thing. It just got approved last week. Well, the it wasn't approved by the planning board because the town owned the land. But last week at the town meeting, the town approved the rights of way, which is kind of the to get into it, which was kind of the last piece. So if anyway, it's big news in town and you might want to pick it up. I don't know whether this is where it would go, but it is a shared service. It's for the whole Rutland dispatch area. Okay. Just a little clarification, Alice. It's actually a communication tower for the emergency services for the police, fire, and ambulance. Yes. And once they get up, they're going to offer the, that tower access to cell phone companies. Oh, they don't know? I thought that was stated at the town meeting. Right, but it... When you step, when you stated that in your presentation, you were just saying that it was cell service for the emergency responders. It's actually communications for the radios, <laughs> and then we're oh. gonna have the cell phone service afterwards. Yes. Okay, that's right. It, it's, it definitely won't get the get the, uh, the the description of the emergency services right, and I don't mean to infer that it's going to happen overnight, but it creates an opportunity. Um, for, as I understand it, um, other companies to come in to fix the general lack of cell service in this town, which is pretty poor in certain areas. Um, I was wondering, do you know if the, the workshop, like the city, the, the citizen planner training collaborative, are those all, have those gone virtual? Are they holding them this year? Do you know, John? Uh, yes, actually, uh, MRPC is going to uh, host uh, two workshops. So we're going to do one in November, or two in November, I believe. So it's going to be virtual. Okay. And are you going to blast out notices to those to local boards or? Yes. Then okay. we can, I'll, I'll shoot one right out to the planning board personally. Yeah, to Christine. That'd be great. Or yes. just to Christina and she can get it to us. Because um, all that yes. came to a halt, and then I think I've noticed that uh, Mass Housing Partnership is, you know, putting on virtual programs now. So that'd be, mm -hmm. be good to catch up. Yes. And another thing I want to ask is on your Mr. Mapper, which I've never mm -hmm. done actually, but would it include up to date floodplain maps? Because ours are really out of date. I'm not sure. I could inquire about that. I've been looking, inquire. trying to yeah. figure out where to find the up-to-date ones, and maybe that'd be a okay. good source. Okay. Yeah, I can ask our GIS staff. Yeah. Uh, I could ask them to, as soon as tomorrow and find out. And if they're on it, you, to get to that app, you just go to the, MP, uh, the MRPC website? Yes. And then it's a pull-down menu or something to get to it? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, ask, because that would be a, that would be solve one of our problems. Ours are really out of date. And I think the idea of a grant of a um, permitting guidebook is great. I'd sort of back that completely. It'd be nice to see an example of uh, one you did. So it would, it, it would include, like a developer wants to come in town, it would say, it, it would be like a flow chart who you need to go to and what, Conservation's expecting what planning board's expecting. Precisely. 
Wow. And actually, I like your comment about looking at an example. I could put like a, a web link to an example of uh, one or two or three communities uh, that do have a permanent guidebook as examples. So that, that's a wonderful idea. Yeah, I think that that, um, that should be a, a good frontier for us. Another, you know, something we should be doing. All right, that's, uh, I think it's well written. I like Ryan's, I don't think I have a lot to add to it, but I appreciate, appreciate the effort and look forward to the rest of the chapter. Mm -hmm. Anyone else want to say anything? Bill or Francois? Alice, no, thank you. But I, I think this was very well done. And uh, I, I appreciate the effort. And more importantly, I think this is a great framework that we can leverage um, not only for the planning board, quite frankly, but across the multiple groups that we have within the town. So thanks for doing this work, uh, John and Jonathan. I have to agree, John. Thank you very much. And it's been a, we've had a lot of meetings together and you've done a great job. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having us. In a couple of weeks. Yes. Thanks, Jonathan, too. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks again. All right. Shall we move on to new business? Um, uh, so we have this uh, reply from Tiny Toes. Maybe you've all read it. It's an email in the shared drive. Um, basically saying they've done a lot of, uh, they have done a lot of work, which is very clear landscaping and so on when you go by the road. And they're um, considering how they're going to screen the, better screen the trailers and will let us know. Um, so I think we just need to not lose sight of the fact that they've promised to do that perhaps. And um, we haven't heard from them in a couple of months, right again? No, we did get a response, right? Yeah, but it's kind of a response as we planned to do this, but it wasn't exactly what they planned to do. And um, Co correct. I, I'm 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 just would like to present the fact that we we did send them this letter. This letter did come back to us, which we appreciate. And. I, I do know that as part of the special permit, it was very clearly stated that they had to fence this off. Now, I'm not opposed to looking at alternatives because I do, I do believe that the artwork that they have placed there uh, is indeed something that is probably even better than we may have even thought. And it was really more than anything just to obscure the, the trailer, which in itself is not a very uh, attractive piece. I do, however, think that there's two things that need to be uh, focused on. The first one is, what is the proposal that they are putting forth? If they are putting forth a proposal to do artwork, I'd like to understand what it is that they are planning on putting there. I mean, I'm not asking for a final definition of this here, but sort of like at least an, an understanding of the concept. And second is, is quite frankly, is the timeline. Uh, the timeline needs to be presented in terms of when they're going to be doing this here because we cannot just extend this here for 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 a definite time period i know we're also getting into a time period now where it's going to get cold it might make very a, a bit more difficult once once the temperature sets itself into lower temperatures because this artwork cannot be potentially be done during that timeline so uh i'd like to at least minimally present to the to my fellow board members that two items need to be addressed and they need to be addressed as soon as possible. One is, is again, the timeline to correct or to, to present uh, their plans for the, for the artwork. And if that is not going to be done as, as the alternative, then a timeline for, for the fencing. Um, well, we could... Um... We could respond to their letter by saying, um, you know, we appreciate your response. Can you pr please provide us with a timeline, a more definitive timeline and a description of your proposed, your, your proposed artwork? I don't know. Right. You, but I, I would also I indicate, I would also like to indicate that I would like to see something like this here coming back to us in a, in a timely manner. Again, it is October the 1st today. And given the weather conditions, we should hopefully have an answer by the time we meet again. And no okay. later. I think, 
I think I think we need to stipulate we need a detailed plan of their of their process. Exactly. Okay, Chris, Christina, could could you take a stab at writing that letter and then asking them to try to please get back to us by our November four meeting? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I do appreciate the fact that they did respond, but I agree it's been quite some time and winter is closing in. Uh, any comments from anybody else on correspondence from other planning boards in the shared file? Um, if not, I don't have anything that stuck, struck me as particularly newsworthy. Um, the Marinelli's. Okay, so as you might recall, where we left this is the Marinelli's, we offered them to join forces with us, the town, and have their a land studied along with the, the gravel pit the town owns off Pitcherville Road uh, by uh, a study for, by VHB um, with the engineers that were going to do that. Uh, VHB wrote us a proposal for professional services um, to <coughs> study the town owned land, uh, particularly with uh, looking at housing, which is how we get involved with it restoration of the land and housing. So I sent this along to uh, the owners of the Marinelli land and Marinelli, Martinelli, Marinelli, Marinelli, right? And um, Louise Prue, the sisters that own the land and said, would you like to join forces with us? Because this, this is going to, this is fairly costly report because um, it's fairly extensive work. Their fee they cited to do the work was $50,000, which would have to come out of affordable housing funds. So it would really be have to be focused on affordable housing. So anyway, I asked them and their answer was after a number of phone calls um, that they have another proposal to use their land that is under active consideration and at their lawyer's office. So at this time, they wouldn't be interested in contributing. They wouldn't be willing to tie up that deal to be part of this study. So, so this leaves us with two things. She said to me, <coughs> she wouldn't detail what the proposed use was. But she did say to me that they would probably know one way or the other by the end of the year, whether this other proposal was going to work out. And so that's one thing, and then she would let us know. And if it wasn't going to work out, they would join forces with this study. The other thing we could do is we could, um, and I've, I've notified you know Ryan of the fact that uh, that they were not willing to participate at the present time. The other thing we could do is we could just go on. Uh, we could go back to him and say, well, how much would it be to specifically evaluate the 15 acres on the town lot for developing X number of units of senior housing, which I think is a, is a big need. Um, you know, um, narrow the scope to what we want and maybe with a narrower scope and the less land that has to be studied, it would be a much more affordable project and get us to a point where we could get something out for at least an RFP or bid, <clears throat> you know, to get something started. So I leave it up to you, but I think we should take a definite vote tonight of whether what we want to do with at this juncture. So questions, comments? What do you think is the best way to go, Alice? Um, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm never someone that likes to kick the can down the road. <laughs> Although I, I actually, I actually like Ann and, and Louise. I think they're being very um, sincere, you know, they're not trying to hide the ball. They're not, they don't want taxpayer money spent on something if they're going to go another direction. Um, but here's the problem I have is that <laughs> If we postpone this till after the first of the year to wait and see what their answer is, then you're pretty darn, you know, town meeting begins to take shape in January, really. So the study would then 
so so I don't know. I mean, I guess my inclination, my personal inclination would be <clears throat> go ahead and have them quote what it would what it would cost to do the town to evaluate the town for senior housing, the town lot for senior housing. But I don't have a big feeling that way. I think also um, there there's an undefined, at least in my mind, right of access through the town land to the Marinelli property. So I guess that would have to be scoped out and see if it actually exists as a, as a uh, right of access. And then we'd have to be set aside in whatever kind of plan um, was developed. So there's, there's issues, but I need to think, know what you think of you know, this way of direction. I mean, I guess there's a part of me that also thinks that you're more likely to get one project done than, than uh, you know, a 60 acre project with, you know, a lot of potential development, a smaller like target project. Through, that that might get off the ground faster, but I want to hear what you guys think. I'd like to go forward with it, but do we have the, the access without going through Marinelli's pit? Oh yeah, they have to go through our pit to get to their land. So is that, is that right of access something that uh, I mean how is that described? Is it described as simply as a like like a, a, a certain amount of feet? That they I, I, I don't know. I, okay. I don't know whether it's just a right of passage and a deed, sort of vague. It's or probably a right of way, Alice. A lot of those properties out there were granted right, right of ways when they put them all up. Right. It does seem to be that understood that it's a right of access. I just don't know the details. Okay. But either way, through the 15 acres, even if it was a, I mean, I don't think it goes right through the middle of it or anything. I think it could be defined and you probably want to provide access to the back land anyway. You know, I mean, and it could be that we could get started on this and then the Marinelli's uh, parcel could you know, be tied up for another year as they continue on to see whether their new new potential use is viable, and if it falls apart. Well, they've, been, they've been there with this this gravel pit for many many years, so I I think you're right, and we'll start in the right direction. You've done a lot of work and legwork on the affordable housing aspect, so I think we should go forward with this and push forward with it and bring it to town meeting and see what the town the town's folks feel about it too. Yeah, but we right, and it will take if we start now with the seems to me with a new study, and then you have to go. You know that's going to take months, right? So we'd be lucky to, if we started right now. If we gave them the go ahead to um, to have actually anything to present in the spring town meeting, you know. So, but I think the way this would work is you would not. It would not be built with CPC money. Um, it would be built with a sort of like Hubbardston House, where a private developer comes in and builds these units, and the town donates the land, and it, but it's dedicated to public housing. It's owned by owned and built by a different company. So it's a process. You'd have to get, you'd have to figure out how the restoration goes and where the buildings would go, and define what it is you want, and then work with the company to make that happen through an RFP process. Um, so I don't know, but at this point, we don't know. This, would going to be, this was gonna cost us 50,000 in CPC funds. I have no problem for using CPC funds to um, you know, create good plans because you have to, you're not gonna build anything if you don't have plans, right? But right. Um, I would think the plan would be much scaled down, the cost of the plan. Francois, are you there? I am. Oh, I didn't. I didn't hear you. What do you think, Francois? I, I, I am. I am for this. I think. I mean, the, the the land has been idle for a long period of time. It is needs to be remediated. Looking at it from this planning perspective and putting forth the um, pu putting this forth in motion, I think makes makes a lot of sense. Um, I I would support this. Okay, so. And I should put it also, Alice. Okay, so we just need a, a, a I think, a simple vote to um, to ask the town administrator.
to scale down the scope of the plan to consider just parcel 57, the town owned gravel pit for use as a senior housing development. And I'll make that motion, Alice, if uh, Christina can write it exactly how you said it. Okay. You got it, Christina? I got it. Uh, Bill Holman makes a motion for the planning board chair to query the town administrator uh, regarding scaling down the available plan to use only town land for use as a senior housing. To study only the town land. That's yes. Scale down the study to include just the town land or. Sounds good. Okay. I will second that motion. Councilor okay. Steiger. Uh, lived all yes. Councilor Steiger, yes. Bill Holmans, yes. Great. And we'll get that out and we'll see what, what comes of it. Old business. Um, these are things on the list where nothing much has happened lately. Uh, 91 Williams Road, 147. We heard that report. Catasto, you haven't heard anything from Christina, right? Can I, can I ask you to go back a, a bit here? Yeah. On the solar. A again, this comes in light of the uh, discussion we had earlier when it came to the meeting minutes. Can I get a final tally as to how many of the solar facilities that we have here in town have actually responded to the uh, request for a an annual report? Give me a moment, please. I have to look that up. Christina, we can. Um, do you want to proceed? It might take me a few minutes. Oh, you. you want to do it in real time? Okay. Or do you want me to report on it at the next meeting? Um, as well. I, I am fine uh, either way. Whatever. I mean, if you can, if you can gather this quickly, then fine. If not, then the next time around, that or maybe by the end of the meeting, we can discuss this here. Okay, we don't have a whole lot left to go, I don't think. That's fine. Uh, there's no there's no update from Catasto. Again, that's stalled because of the lack of materials from the plant, as I I gather, uh, which continues with the with everybody going electronic and no nobody making paper. <laughs> um, Affordable housing, CPA, no tax title updates. Although, Christina, it'd be good to have an update on that. Maybe at the next meeting, the five lots and where they stand. Okay. I'll, I'll put it on for an update while she's looking at something else. No, I'm, I'm doing it now. Okay. I have to, I have to take minutes while you, you continue. So I have to keep going. Uh, give me a second, please. Okay. Um, the master plan, we, the latest chapter, of course, is Mr. Hume. We just presented it. We're closing in on it. I guess one of the things we should think about in light of his presentation, maybe it's not the best place to bring it up, but um, maybe I will talk to Ryan about how he sees the master plan implementation committee taking shape. My personal feeling is it shouldn't be just the planning board because we've already got a million things to do. Um, and it's a whole lot further reach than the planning board's jurisdiction, you know. I will talk to Ryan with a suggestion and get a suggestion of how he sees the composition of the implementation committee and report back. Okay. Bylaws, um, we did. Uh, we did get the it, the warrant article passed that made the um, alternate member a, it had to be a citizen of the town that did pass. So administrative matters. Christina's working on an administrative matter. No, I have it here, ma'am. Um, okay. We have we have three of the four uh, solar reports, and then one other administrative matter is that before the next meeting, I'd like the board to consider. Um, 
the capital budget is due by the end of the year. Any proposals that are in excess of $15,000 the planning board feels that we'd like to put on for next year. So it's not something we can discuss tonight because I'm just bringing it up. I just got the email. But okay. if you guys wouldn't mind thinking about it, I will be forwarding you the email and you can uh, re review it and discuss it at the next meeting. Great. Madam, Madam Chair, this is uh, Francois. I am part of the uh, capital uh, uh, improvement uh, uh, group there. So um, if, if there's anything specifically that you would like to present, uh, it will be good to have that because I think we're going to start having our meetings uh, shortly. Um, this, again, as, as, as it was pointed out, this, this just got started and uh, the information that I can share then on behalf of the planning board is certainly I'm more than happy to present it as, as a member of the planning board. Capital budget. Okay. What, is, what are they it's looking for? Improvement, it's a capital improvement uh, uh, planning committee. Okay. But that's money that's spent for basically um, equipment, Correct. It, yes, it can be okay. it, it, yes. Basically, uh, it, it's any any anything that you can think of from a budgeting perspective that requires. Um, typically, I think it, the cutoff is. Did you say fifteen thousand or was five thousand? I remember the exact number. I'm sorry. I believe it's ten to fifteen. Give me one moment. I, just yeah. wanna, I have it here. <laughs> It is ten thousand. Ten thousand dollars. Okay. Well, we'll give it some thought. Yes. Okay. Uh, Although I will say that last year we did have a few items that were um, included. That included, uh, you know, like a backpack blower, which was like five hundred dollars, and a walk behind blower for the cemetery uh, group, which was uh, thirteen hundred dollars. So, not 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 necessarily all items are are as big as uh, $10,000 or more. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. Okay, well, we definitely will give it some thought. Um, anybody out there in the wings left for public comments? Did you ever hear back from the ANR people? No, ma'am, but I did notice, uh, I did do a quick review of our subdivision plan uh, regulations. There's nothing in there that specifically states they have to be present at the time it's reviewed. So it's at the board's discretion, I suppose. Is there a I, I don't. deadline? I'm sorry? Is there a deadline for acting? Do I didn't see one, ma'am, but I haven't checked the MGL for this and it's not in the bylaw. Did it just come in recently? It came in on, uh, I believe, give me one second. I believe it was finalized this week, ma'am. Okay. Can can we task you with getting hold of them and telling them please come to the fifteenth meeting and put it on? And we can get them in before the, the public hearing? Yes. Okay. I think we could do that as a favor to them. Um ma'am, out of curiosity, if they're unable to make it, would you just like me to pose a question to them and copy the board? Yes. I mean yes. obviously it's just answering one question as long as the board doesn't respond, it's not discussion, but just a just a yeah small narrative. We're dividing it yeah in two, and the piece of our, the explanation of the cutout is what we understand the rest. But okay, um, I'm not even sure that uh, we can demand that answer, but I think it's a reasonable request. So I, I sus very much suspect it has to do with a side yard setback. But let's see. Um. So. I guess we're just about down to the next meetings, October 15th. It's really, really important that we get a quorum because this has been, we're up against the, the 60 days, you know, that we have to act, which means we don't have to act on the 15th, but we have to be there and convene a meeting and discuss it and then ask for an extension if we're not ready to act. Uh, so a very, very important. Um, and it's our alternate can vote on site plan approvals. So we're going to try to get, I know Erica's still with us. Um, Erica, you can come to that. And we really need to have you there on the 15th and you can participate. Did she get a set of plans? Yes, she did, ma'am. Okay. So we can't discuss it now. Um, but in addition to the plans, there is a 
fairly lengthy analysis by Bill Murray of, um, of the project. Um, so everybody be up to date with what's there and we'll take it from there. I don't know whether we'll be in a position to approve it that night, probably not because of the number of uh, issues that have been raised, but I do expect actually there to be members of the public as well. So, so just be there. And I guess that's it, unless Christina has anything more. No, ma'am. Okay. Somebody want to make a motion to adjourn? Uh, before, that happens, yep. sorry, before that happens, I did want to ask Christina, when you have a moment, would you kindly send to the board uh, the list of those uh, uh, solar facilities that have not responded? It's only one. It's the one out on Pitcherville. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'll make that motion to adjourn, Alice. Okay. Francis Francis Schneider, anything else? No, Francis Steiger seconds that motion. Okay. I'm ready to go. So, lived all I. Steiger, I. Bill Homan's I. Nice to talk okay, to you all tonight. Guys.